when we began the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, I said we wanted to create a social movement. And in my view, we had evidence of that social movement this afternoon. My heart is full. If we can get a Twitter feed to a guy up in outer space, for Pete's sake, we can get an education to a child up in Northern Ontario. Now, I was sitting there uh, in front of her as a newly minted family doctor, thinking about all the years of school that I had gone through and thinking about what I was told to tell her. And that was to lecture her about the importance of exercise and eating well. It was obviously no surprise, the least helpful thing I could have done for her that day. And I think that's pretty emblematic of where our healthcare system is when it comes to social determinants of health. We always hear people concerned that the health, health is taking up more and more of the budget. Health is already 100% of the budget. We just don't think about it that way. It's, it's a fundamental change to governance. And maybe even in a systematic way so that each and every single policy that comes out of a government will have had, had a bit of consideration for health and equity. This past week, Nine people die in a house fire. In a house that has no water. A First Nations woman dies in a river outside of Thunder Bay. I testify at an inquest and I, uh, regarding the deaths of seven young people who at the age of 13 had to leave their homes just to get an education. And I see teenagers saying, it's too late for my childhood. It's too late to be treated equally, but it's not too late for that baby born today. It's not too late. We're living, as we all know, in an increasingly uh, precarious economy, more and, more and more people going in and out of the job market, more and more people working on contract, more and more people working part-time. Uh, people fall sick, they reduce their hours, they have their hours reduced, they're laid off, they come back as temporary part-time contract workers. As income falls, the probability of food insecurity rises, but even at very low levels of income, we never get to a point where 100% of households are food insecure. How come? Well, it's taken us a long time to figure this out, and we think it's because food insecurity is actually an even better measure of material deprivation than income is. Increasingly, the two ends of the distribution are getting more disparate, particularly in our large cities. And that means people live in rich and poor neighborhoods increasingly more frequently than they did. You can do local development, but if you do not listen to people, you run the risk of being totally irrelevant. I really encourage you to be the ones calling on them to move upstream and change determinants of health. It depends on where you live. Where you live will tell you what your life expectancy is. Equality is the floor for First Nations children, not the ceiling. Think about what's your attitude to the poor. If you're of one political persuasion, you may think that the poor are architects of their own misfortune, feckless, worthless, or have another attitude, which is, I do care about the poor. If the nature of society leads to people being poor and their health suffering as a result, I think that's very bad. But in your heart of hearts, you say, that's not me. We've got to make common cause between people who are not poor and poor. If there's a 17-year gap in disability free life expectancy, it means the average person has eight fewer years of healthy life expectancy. Eight fewer years of healthy life expectancy means earlier onset of decline in grip strength, earlier onset of difficulty walking, earlier onset of decline in cognitive to call it a um, uh, uh, cognitive function <laughs> and of course fewer years of life. We have to make common cause. The poor are part of us and we're part of the poor. We're all part of this society. That's what the gradient is telling us. I will go back to work tomorrow uh, determined more than ever by the inspiration that you've been here to me tonight to make sure that health is in fact a part of all of the policies that we look at. And I will ask you to go back to your communities and make sure that health and health care are part of your ongoing discourse.